Don't judge this book by its decidedly dull cover. Across its pages, some of the most dramatic changes in the history of autism have played out, and these changes have shaped how we understand and treat autism today. Known as the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or the DSM, this book details traits that help clinicians diagnose psychiatric conditions. The term autistic first debuted in the second edition of the DSM in 1968. This was some 25 years after psychiatrist Leo Kanner used the term to describe children who seemed to be caught up in their own world. But the understanding of autism at that time was so limited that it was mentioned only as a part of childhood schizophrenia. In 1980, autism finally appeared as a separate condition in the DSM-3. This description echoed Kanner's observations. It said people with autism are unresponsive to others, use repetitive language, and show what is called bizarre behaviors, such as resistance to change. Skip forward seven years, and a revision to the DSM-3 outlined three categories for diagnosis. Restricted and repetitive behaviors, impairments in social interaction, and communication deficits. Children needed to meet eight of 16 criteria across those three categories to be diagnosed. This revision also added pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified, or PDD-NOS, a new diagnosis at the mild end of the spectrum. When the DSM-4 rolled out in 1994, this edition added several diagnoses, including Asperger's disorder, also on the mild end of the autism spectrum. But in 2013, almost a decade later, this expanding description contracted when the fifth edition of the DSM hit the shelves. The DSM-5 combined autism, Asperger's, and PDD-NOS into one diagnosis, Autism Spectrum Disorder. It also collapsed the three diagnostic categories into two, and its requirements are stricter. With this rigid definition, the DSM-5 aims to make autism diagnosis more precise. On the other hand, this version may be less sensitive. Five years after the DSM-5's release, studies are revealing that it may exclude people at the milder end of the autism spectrum. Undiagnosed adults and girls are especially at risk because they may be better at masking their autism traits. Still, in the absence of any biological tests for autism, this manual is among the best tools doctors have. And it is always being improved. The DSM-5 is the first version of the manual that will be regularly updated online to reflect the latest research. Stay tuned for the next 50 years of refinements.